Hi YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to another episode of creating our 2D side scroller in Unreal Engine 4. This is take two. I actually did a whole video um, and for some reason my microphone went all crazy halfway through. Obviously I can't see that happening um, so I had to redo the whole video again. So I did notice I, did, I made a few, um, well not mistakes, but I was a bit quick on a few, few things along the way through my video. So I'm going to slow down a little bit more um, and go through it in a little bit more detail. So in today's video, what we're going to look at is getting our character to shoot, which is something a lot of you have been asking for, which is good. Um, and yeah, we'll make it a reality. It's not very difficult to do. I always say that, but um, yeah, it's, it's not that hard. It is pretty straightforward. Once you understand how to do it, it's not, in my opinion, it's not very difficult to do once you know how to do it. Okay, so without further ado, let's get in. So where we got up to in our last session is we created the enum states which allowed us to move our character around. Uh, so we could make him jump and run and die and etc. So what we're going to look in this session is how do we get our projectiles to come out the character. So for example, to make him shoot a bully um, from obviously Mega Man's hand and etc. We'll be able to do that within this session. But the very first thing we need is we need to get our flipbook for our projectile. Now there is one in this pack. Um, so if you have been following with me, you can obviously grab this pack in one in the description where we grab the sprite sheet from. Um, and the projectile is just here. Uh, there's the projectile right there. And it's only one frame. I mean, if you want to go crazy, you could make some more of the same with this frame and just change it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more animated. But in this example, we're just going to use this. So we're going to create a flipbook. I'm going to call this flip underscore bullet. That's what we're going to call this one. Okay. Uh, again, remember if you want to make it into an animation sequence, you can, uh, but it's not really necessary uh, for this tutorial. I mean, in your own game, obviously, it makes sense. So for this to work, we need to make a blueprint for the bullet itself. Okay, so you need to head yourself into the blueprint folder, and we're going to create ourselves a new blueprint class, and the blueprint's going to be an actor. And remember, we name everything BP, and it's going to be underscore bullets or whatever you want to call it. Okay, you can call it BP underscore shot, you can call it BP underscore laser, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you call it, because as long as you know what it is, then that's all that matters. Okay, so I'm going to open up that blueprint, and this is going to be where things might be a little bit confusing to you. The first component we need to add into here is not the flipbook. What we need to add first is something called a projectile. Okay, so it's a projectile movement, and basically this is updated every event tick, so it will always update continuously. Okay, and what we then add is our sprite, so our flipbook. Okay, so now we can add our flipbook, and obviously our flipbook is going to be the flip bullet. Drag that into our default scene route, and there we go. There's our bullet there, and really. We don't need to do anything in the event graph until we start adding enemies. For example, how much damage do we want this bullet to do if it hits um, certain objects? Do we want it to disappear if it hits something um, and etc. But we do need to change something in this viewport and that's going to be the projectile movement itself. And this all revolves around physics. Okay, so if, if you took science in school, uh, this would make sense to you. If you failed school, then listen carefully. So basically what happens is if something's moving at a velocity, so if it's going from A to B, okay, in a direction of movement, it needs to have some generation of speed, okay? And also you need to take into consideration Newton laws of gravity, all right? So everything has gravity attached to it. So if I had to just say, for example, have this bullet currently, and I was standing at the top of a building, and I had to for example, drop it or just release the bully, it would just drop, okay? Because by default, Unreal gives objects gravity, and at the moment, there's no speed given to the bully, and we need to give it speed. And to do that is make sure you select your projectile movement, and we have speed here. So we got initial speed and max speed. You can change this to whatever you like. I like 250, that's my comfort zone. So I'm just going to change both of those to 250. However, you also need to take into consideration Newton's law of gravity. If you are making a game where you want the projectiles to just go straight 
and not have any effect with gravity, obviously you need to change the gravity to zero. If you want it to shoot but dip, then obviously you then put your own gravity into that. Okay, but for our little, uh, it calls a prototype tutorial, I suppose, um, we're going to set that gravity to zero so we can see that projectile moving. Okay, at a continuous rate. So you will just see it going across the screen, and that's exactly what we want to happen. Okay. So now that's all completed, we can compile and save, and that's all we've got to do with the bullet, really. Um, we don't need to do anything else in regards to that. It's pretty much set in stone. But what we need to do now is we need to go into our character blueprint. Okay, so we need to go into our character blueprint. Now, you'll notice that I moved the shooting animation now because remember this is take two because my microphone duffed up when I went back onto my video. So I did move the shooting animation now uh, from our, an, our handle animation just because we're going to start working off our press state. So this one here. So this shooting sequence here. Okay. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to attach the sound and we're also going to attach the projectile movement here in this section right here. Now remember to do that, we need to have a sequence. So to add a sequence, remember it's either S and click or you can right click and search for sequence if you are a grammar Nazi. Okay, so if you don't really, if you like spelling a lot, that's probably your best option. And all I'm going to do is attach that to my sequence. And basically that's saying when I shoot, then we're going to trigger off the sequence of whatever we're going to take off this pin. So first things first, let's play a sound. So let's play the sound at location. Now I didn't download a sound. You can if you like. Um, remember on my, I think it was my third video where I showed you how to add sound. Go to that website, grab whatever sound you like. By all means, use them. But in this case, I'm just going to use an explosion. So let's just take the explosion. That's default. That comes standard. So I'm just going to use this one just for an example. Okay. Now, this one, so once it's played the sound, we then want it to spawn in the bullet. And that's pretty much it, right? You guys know this, that the word spawn shouldn't be natural to any developer. And basically, we're going to type in spawn actor. Okay, so spawn actor from class. Okay, so basically this is going to be able to allow us to spawn any class that we have now class being an actor and all our blueprints we've made are actors. Okay, that's pretty much as straightforward as we're going to get. They are all actors and the class we're going to choose is going to be our BP underscore bullet. Remember that's the blueprint we created that had our bullet. Now, if I had to try and save and play this, it won't work. It's going to come with an error. And it's going to say, well, you want to spawn something, but you're not telling us exactly where you'd like to spawn it. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure we can spawn this bully at the world location. Okay. Which can be a little bit tricky in some instances. It can, it can get a little bit confusing. All right. But what we need to do is we need to know which, where the bullet is going, so the direction the bullet's going to go. Now, some of you might do some crazy mathematical thing to do this, but there is such an easier option if you're making a very simplistic shooting styled game that all we have to do is go into the viewport. Okay. Um, oh, so this is from the last session. I just changed the sprite to the shooting animation. I mean, you can do that if you like. Just click on it and change to the shoot. Okay. But all we need to add into our components here is going to be an arrow. That's all it is. All right. You're going to put an arrow in and you're going to move that arrow. So it's touching the front of his gun. Oh, let's make that go a little bit slower. Okay. So it's touching the front of his gun like so. And it's in that direction. If you move it that way, obviously it's going to not work. All right. Cause it's going to shoot upwards, but we want the projectiles to shoot from this direction. Now, some of you say, okay, well, what happens if I go that way? Well, basically what happens is the flip book, it flips 180 degrees. So all this that's attached to it. So everything you see here, all flips 180 degrees with it. So you don't really need to worry about putting another arrow in this direction. There's no need for that, but we will name this arrow. So we're just going to call this arrow shots just so it makes sense to us. Cause there's two arrows. If you can see there's that arrow and this arrow. So we're going to call this arrow shot. 
compile and save. Now it's still going to say there's an error because obviously the event graph is broken. Um, so we need to obviously fix that one. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our arrow shot and pull that in. Okay, so basically we're just getting the state of the arrow. So which direction is it pointing in? And all we do now is we're going to say get world transformation. Okay, so get world transform. And basically that's saying is getting the current component, so i.e. the arrow, okay, where it is, and then we're going to spawn this bullet towards the arrow. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, and obviously we added speed to the bullet, so it's going to continue in that direction with no gravity. Let's attach that in. Okay, now if I compile and save and play, that should now work. So if I shoot, you can see our bullet projectiles are moving. They are pretty small bullets though, I'm not going to lie. They are very tiny. We could probably change that if we scale it. Uh, let's have a gig. Let's go into our blueprints, our bully. Click on our flip book. Let's scale them to about maybe 25. Pile, save, and play. They're a little bit bigger. I wouldn't say insanely bigger. It is a very small sprite, so it might mean you might need to make it quite big in regards to the size of, of the actual bullet itself. But that's pretty much it. I mean, setting up. I mean, if we can also jump and shoot at the same time, that's fine. You can hear the explosion. I'm sorry for your ears um, with the explosion sounds going on in the background. But that's as easy as it gets when it comes to creating um, bullet projectiles in Unreal, in, especially in a 2D environment. It's really easy. Now, don't get me wrong. If we were talking about, let's say, um, I don't know, in a 3D realm, that's a completely different ball game in the style that it will be. Uh, it's not as, as easy as that. Um, but in a two two dimensional plane, because we're only working with one axis pretty much, which is the x axis, it's very easy because it's only in one direction, and and that's why it, it makes life a lot more easy when you make two D side scrollers. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you uh, watched this series. Uh, the next episode we're going to look at is adding our our enemies into our scenes. Uh, we're going to be able to do damage to the enemy. Uh, and that's uh, we could put a few in so for example spikes on the floor or whatever We can actually have an enemy character there too if, if needs be um, But we'll add that all in into the game itself so you can start seeing it grow um, in particular Again, thank you very much. I'm Wayne. I was glad for you to take for this session and I'll hopefully see you in the next one Remember like subscribe share uh, with your friends if you like to try uh, follow me on Twitter if you like I'm still trying to get used to that, um, but I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you very much and goodbye